and welcome to another video. My name is Lainey, my pronouns are they, them, and today we are going to be talking about replicas and why and how they harm the Lolita community. I hope this is very educational for any newbies who aren't really familiar with replicas. So let's start off by talking about what is a replica. So there are primarily two types of replicas, especially when we're talking about Lolita fashion. We have design replicas and print replicas. So what is a design replica? Well, design replicas are a lot harder to kind of spot and enforce, especially when it comes to like copyright law. And that's because of the Lolita silhouette. The Lolita silhouette is extremely unique. There's only so many ways that you can recreate that unique silhouette with different cuts. So basically what a design replica is, it's a copy of the cut of the dress and how it's actually constructed with its different patterns and design. Think of those actual patterns of fabric, not the print, not the color, how it's actually constructed. These types of replicas aren't really looked down upon either since, like I said, there's only so many ways that you can recreate this unique silhouette. Editing Lainey here, I just want to let you know that this does not touch upon western pattern companies like McCall's or Simplicity releasing and copying Lolita patterns for dresses and accessories. That would be an entirely different video, but if this is something you find interesting and want to know more about, let me know down below in the comments and maybe I can work on a video talking about it. Okay, thank you. That's all. Bye. The other type of replica is a print replica. This is where all of the harm comes from, is from these print replicas. So a print replica is a copy of an exact print or visual aspects of a print. It doesn't necessarily have to be an exact copy, but it can be an exact copy. And it needs to be apparent that these two designs are extremely similar that, you know, this replica design has taken a huge amount of inspiration or has copied, you know, a significant portion of it. This can not only be, you know, copying the exact print of the design, but also copying the colors or the lace, the placement of details as well. So it's copying the visual aspect of the design rather than the construction of the design. So let's talk a little bit about why this is so harmful to the Lolita community. These are only a few reasons that I thought of, but of course there are more, and if you can think of more, be sure to comment them down below, because it would be super helpful to all of our friends who are new to this topic. So let's talk about the quality difference as our first main point. Replica qualities are much much lower than original pieces. This is because a lot of replicas are mass produced, whereas these original Lolita dresses, they're made in these small batches. And they're also typically made with higher quality materials and fabric and lace, whereas these replicas will use really cheap lace, costume level lace and materials that are shiny, they don't feel as nice, they're low quality, and they're also missing the level of detail. A lot of Lolita dress will use different types of lace and frick rack and buttons. You probably won't see that in a replica Lolita dress, and if you do, it's probably really low quality lace that you could find easily in a costume store. What does this mean in terms of detail beyond lace? and be on, you know, these different fabrics and ruffles. It also can kind of leak into construction as well. With replica dresses, you probably won't see any pockets. You probably won't see, you know, this nice lining that some, some dresses have. You won't maybe see shearing or waist ties or pin tucks or all of these small construction details that give Lolita dresses such a nice quality and shape and really make Lolita Lolita. Replicas are basically mass produced and are made to get out on the line, out of production, as quickly as possible to market. So this means that, you know, not a ton of thought goes into the actual design and construction. And what does that mean? It means it's not going to be tailored as well as a Lolita dress. It's not going to fit your body as well as something from Baby or Angelic Pretty. It's not going to be as flattering, as nicely tailored. 
it's just not going to look as well. This means that it's likely not going to be flattering because it's not made for actual human bodies. It's not constructed to be flattering with a lot of thought going into the proportions of your sleeves or what length it should be in proportion to the torso and little details like that. They basically just try to get it to market as quick as possible. That thought and emotion isn't behind it on how it would actually fit the consumer. Let's talk about point number two. This one specifically relates to Amazon, but it can relate to eBay and Wish and AliExpress and all of these other ones. But point number two is about the extremely high markups on replicas, the infamous Amazon dress, which we all know is the and Romeo replica, it sells for around 60 USD. 60! The dress I'm wearing now? This was $44. $60 is so much. You can buy a real legitimate Lolita dress from an actual brand, not one of these predatory Amazon storefronts, for much, much less. And of course, this does include dresses for our plus size and our tall friends as well. For example, Bodyline goes up to a 4L and they will frequently have clearance sales where they'll sell JSKs for like $10. And I can vouch for Bodyline. I have plenty of reviews for them. I own tons of their dresses. It's a great deal. Just be sure to hop on those sales fast, especially if you're looking for larger sizes like 4Ls, 2Ls, Ls. They, they go out really quickly. Even size mediums sell out really quickly. So just be sure to stay on top of that if you're looking for clearance sales. I also want to mention Tiny Garden 2 for our plus size and our tall friends. This is an extremely friendly brand for anyone tall, anyone plus sized, and their dresses sell for around 25 bucks on Tabao. I am borrowing two dresses from Tiny Garden from my cousin right now, and they are absolutely lovely. They are constructed so beautifully. They have a wonderful weight, and they are extremely, extremely friendly for anyone tall. They are very long at me and 5'5", five five, and they fit my very tall cousin wonderfully. Of course, these are only two examples of affordable brands, but there are plenty out there. If you're plus size or if you're tall and you're looking for more accommodating brands, especially those that fit into your budget, check out the Big Sisters of Lolita fashion page. People are actually starting to make spreadsheets and different links to resources where you can easily find brands in your style that will fit your needs. Not to mention that none of this includes the secondhand market where on Lace Market you can check a little box for your measurements and then all the listings will be in your size range. Lace Market is also an amazing place to find secondhand Lolita dresses, which means it's more sustainable for a fraction of the price. I have found some really cheap pieces, so I highly recommend those. But the point of number two is Replicas are super expensive and super overpriced. You are not going to get the quality of a $60 dress. Instead, buy something from Tiny Garden or from Lace Market or Taobao or anywhere else that's a real Lolita brand. Okay, let's talk about point number three. And this is the harm that these replicas cause. So replicas also harm the original brand who designed this dress. Lolita brands, they are extremely small. They do not compare to big names out there like Coach and Gucci and Louis Vuitton. Even though Lolita is technically mass prestige like Coach, it is really, really small. It is on an extremely small scale in comparison to the brands that you may think of for your normie clothes. But what does this mean and like why is this actually important? It means that because they're so small, they can easily go out of business. And these replica dresses take that money directly out of their original brand's pockets. Instead of buying directly from Anne Romeo, you're putting that money into Jeffrey Bezos' pockets. It's going to Milano's pockets or Shein's, all of these giant corporations rather than these really small independent storefronts and brands. Basically, what I'm saying is big companies are profiting off of the hard work of these small businesses, and it puts them out of business. 
So if you keep buying replicas, then we won't have as many Lolita brands, and there already aren't a ton and a ton of Lolita brands to exist to begin with. It's not just the profit margin that replicas hurt, it's also the brand's reputation. If your first experience ever is buying a Lolita replica, you're going to think that all brands that sell Lolita are this exact quality and have, you know, this costume level lace, have this poor construction, that they're cheap, that they're ill-fitting, all of these negative things. And for a specific example, since the Amazon dress is so infamous, you know that it's a replica of And Romeo. So if you buy this replica dress and you don't realize it's a replica, you think this is And Romeo's actual dress, you're gonna think, oh, And Romeo has horrible quality. I don't wanna buy from them ever again. It's going to ruin this brand's reputation. They're getting a bad rap because of this mass-produced, low-quality replica that stole their design. You're going to mistake that quality and you're going to think that Lolita brands, actual legitimate Lolita brands, put out things that are low quality. Those are our main reasons why buying a replica is so harmful to the Lolita community. I hope that if you're just getting started in Lolita, this has helped you, you know, aim to be a little more thoughtful, a little more ethical, and a little more sustainable in how you're purchasing. I really hope that this video changes at least one person's mind to buy a replica, and instead they'll check out Big Sisters of Lolita Fashion for some advice, they'll check out Lace Market or Body Line or Tiny Garden. If you have any more reasons that replicas could potentially be harmful, please comment them down below so you can help me educate our fellow friends. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see any more educational Lolita videos, please leave this video a like, maybe subscribe, and comment some ideas about topics that I can talk about. This has been your favorite non-binary Lolita, out. Goodbye! See you on Friday!